All right, we're going to look now at solving trig equations where you need to use factoring, either trinomial factoring or greatest common factor factoring, or even possibly the quadratic formula if those other two methods fail in order to solve it. So what we're talking about here is a trig equation that looks, say, something like that. All right, that's a second degree trig function because it's got the trig function to the power of 2 there, right? But, but something important to realize here is you have that trig function to the power of 2, but then you have this other term here where it's not to the power of 2. So we're not going to be able to use isolation because we can't combine those two terms together. So what we're going to have to do is try and factor this, or failing that, use the quadratic formula. So what you're going to need to think is just think of this tan theta as a single variable and Think of what we would do in that case, as in if this said m squared minus 2m minus 3 equals 0, as in if that tan theta was just m, what would you do? Well, you'd probably try and factor it, and you'd write something like m there, m there. It needs to be equal to 0 on the other side. It doesn't work if it's not equal to 0. You can't use this principle of factoring. And you'd eventually hopefully come to the conclusion that it's that. And then you can write what your solutions are here. They're those two values. Now, since we're looking at something that says tan theta squared, etc., we wouldn't be done there. And what we're going to need to have instead is, uh, instead of this saying m minus 3 and m plus 1, this is going to say tan theta minus 3 and tan theta plus 1. right? And then in the end here, we're going to have tan theta is 3 or negative 1. All right, it's exactly the same process there. Now at this point, then we're gonna we're gonna need to split this apart and say we're not done because we need to actually find what those uh, values of theta are. We have tan theta equals three or tan theta equals negative one. To find those values, let's tackle one of them at a time here. Let's do this one first. This half of it here. We're looking at here where tangent is positive. So that's going to give us two angles, one in quadrant 1 and one in quadrant 3. Let's uh, move this out of the way here first. And one in quadrant 3. Now, let's keep this color coded here too, maybe so we can see the difference. So those other ones, now this is where tangent is negative. Right, we're looking where tangent is going to be negative in quadrant two and four. Now these, I maybe it looks like I've drawn them with the same reference angle, but it's important to realize they're going to have different reference angles. So we're going to find them separately here. Let's let's uh, find this one first. That three looks like it might be in one of those special triangles. You have a special triangle that's you know one root three and two, but it's important to realize this is root three. It's not 3. You can't get tangent of 3 out of that triangle, nor can you get it out of the other triangle. So we're going to have to resort to the calculator here and find the reference angle by using that tan inverse function of 3, and then using that reference angle to find our two angles. That reference angle, let's get the calculator here and find it. Make sure it's in radian mode. And then we want to now do tan inverse of 3. See what it gives us. 1.25 if you're rounding it off to two decimal places. And that's our first angle too, right? This is roughly 1.25. Since it's in quadrant 1, that's one of our two angles. So I'm going to say theta 1 is roughly 1.25. Theta 2 here is going to be quadrant 3, and it's going to be pi plus that reference angle. So let's go back to our calculator and do that now. So we want now pi plus that answer we just got, 4.39. So roughly 4.39. Those are our first two solutions. To find our other two, we got to look at now at this other factor that we had, right? This actually tangent is negative 1. When tangent is negative 1, you should recognize that that is a tangent being 1 is one of those special triangles because a tangent being 1 means the opposite and the adjacent are the same. If those are the same, 
then that tangent is 1, right? Opposite over adjacent. That's that 1, 1, root 2 triangle, 45 degrees. 45 degrees is where the tangent is 1. So when you want when the tangent's negative 1, 45 degrees, or pi over 4, is going to be the reference angle. Pi over 4, the reference angle, and then you find your two angles. You want to find that one and that one using that reference angle. So our, you know, theta 3 is going to be pi minus your quadrant 2, so pi minus the reference angle, so 3 pi over 4. And the fourth angle in quadrant 4 over here is going to be 2 pi minus the reference angle, so 7 pi over 4. So if we're going to write down all our solutions there, all our solutions, we'll put it down at the bottom here. And if you want to do it in order, I guess you could, 1.25, 3 pi over 4, 4.39, and 7 pi over 4. Right? Those are the four solutions for that, that trig equation. Remember, the, the principle you're using here is you are taking the original equation and you are writing it as two factors because if you can write it as two factors, that factor in yellow times that factor in blue equals 0 one of those two factors is equal to zero. So either 10 minus 3 equals zero, or in other words, tangent equals 3, or 10 plus 1 equals zero, or in other words, tangent is negative 1. Right, you can break it apart like that. Let's try another one here. All right, this one, we're looking at solving where cosine squared theta minus cos theta equals zero. Now that's a little bit different than the other one. Because if you're comparing it to equation solving, you already know this is as though it said, say, m squared minus m equals 0. That's not a trinomial. There's only two terms there. And there is a common factor. So you're going to solve that one by factoring it as though if you were solving this where m squared minus m equals 0, you'd just write it as m times m minus 1 equals 0. And you'd look for where that's 0 or where that's 0. So in our case then here, instead of m, it's just going to be cos theta, right? When we have cos theta squared minus cos theta, we're going to write it as, take out that common factor of cosine, and you're going to be left with cosine theta minus 1. And we're going to split it into two parts here. Either this factor right here is 0, right? Cos theta is 0. Or this factor is 0. Cos minus 1 is 0. And you can actually write that and solve it if you want. You can say cos theta minus 1 equals 0. Or in other words, cos theta equals 1. And you're going to look for values for each of those. Now these two, both of these things are going to be things that we can use exact values for. And you should be thinking in terms of, the easiest way to do this is think in terms of a unit circle. Let's bring these axes a little closer here. So we can see them, everything all at once. If we want to know where each of these cosine values, 0 or 1, let's think about the unit circle. If you had a circle on our axes there, there we are. Cosine is the x-coordinate of a unit circle. The points on that unit circle are, this, is the, this point over here is 1, 0. This point up here is 0, 1. This point is negative 1, 0. And this point down here is 0, negative 1. So if you're looking for what the cosine is as you go around, as you go around there, cosine starts at 1. Cosine gets to be 0 up there, it goes down to negative 1, goes back up to 0, and then up to 1. So if you want to write solutions to this, if we want to know now where cosine is 0, we'll just look where that x-coordinate is 0. It's 0 in two places. There's going to be two angles there, right? There and there. All right, so one of the angles is 90 degrees or pi over 2, and then the other angle for that is... 270 degrees or 3 pi over 2. Those are two of the two of the solutions we're looking for. And then the other one is going to be right in here where we want to know where cosine is 1. Cosine is 1 right there at the beginning at 0. All right? So this angle over here is going to be 0. All right? So we got the first two angles is that. We have another one here. Those are our solutions. If I want to put them perhaps in order here, Again, not that it matters, but in order, I can just write 0, pi over 2, 3 pi over 2. Three solutions to that, right? 
Sometimes when it factors, you expect each factor gives you two. That's not always true, right? Because that one factor, there's only one value that works there. All right, let's look at the last one here. This one involves reciprocal ratios. But this is a trinomial again here because we've got 3 cosecant squared plus 5 cosecant minus 2. All right, there's three terms there. We got degree 2 term, degree 1 term, degree 0, just a constant on the end there. So we're going to try doing this one by factoring again. Since that has a, a value other than 1 at the beginning on that quadratic term, on that degree 2 term, we're going to try this, right? If this factors, this is the only possibility here, is 3 cosecant and cosecant. And look at that last term, minus 2. Well, 2 and 1 are only possibilities here. Now you might, you know, depending on your factoring skills, I guess, try the 2 and the 1 or whatever method you use. But eventually you want to come up with the fact that the factors are, that you have a 2 and a 1 there, and you're going to need a plus there and a minus there for this. And just double check. Minus 1 cosecant plus 6 cosecant gives us that right middle term there. So then again the principle of factoring is that once you write it as the product of two factors that equals 0, one of them has to be 0. right? So either we have 3 cosecant theta minus 1 equals 0 or cosecant theta plus 2 equals 0. So isolating each case here, cosecant theta is 1 third, or cosecant theta is negative 2. So let's look at each of those things. Cosecant being 1 third is the same as sine theta being 3. Now, if you're thinking about where that is, you would decide that you're looking in quadrants 1 and 2, except we're going to see in a second that this is not going to go very far with that one because sine being 3, there's no way to have a sine ratio that's 3. You know, in a triangle, sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. There's no way to have the opposite bigger than the hypotenuse. There's no way to draw a triangle where the, the opposite is 3 times the hypotenuse. Or if you think about a unit circle, coordinates on a unit circle, sine is the y coordinate. A unit circle, you can't have a coordinate that's 3. So this is actually not going to give us any solutions here. So I'll take those two things away. Right? That factor gives us no solutions. There's no values that make that factor in yellow zero. The other side here, cosecant is negative 2, which means sine theta is negative 1 half. That is going to give us some solutions. Sine being negative, that's in quadrant 3 and 4. Sine being a half, that is one of those special ratios that we should think about here. Sine being a half is going to be, there's a 1, there's a 2. It's going to be this smaller angle. And if I was to draw this properly, I probably should have drawn them a little bit less steep because this reference angle is pi over 6. right? Reference angle here is pi over 6, the smaller one. That is not one of the solutions though because we're looking at pi plus pi over 6 and that 2 pi minus pi over 6. So solutions there are 7 pi over 6 in quadrant 3 and 11 pi over 6 in quadrant 4. Those are your only two solutions, right? Because this other factor didn't give us anything. Can't have a sign that's 3. All right, so there's a look at solving second degree trig equations where you need to use factoring. Now, what I didn't look at here is using the quadratic formula. If you had a trig equation that was degree 2 and it didn't factor, that doesn't mean you're done. It just means you'd have to try and use the quadratic formula, which you'd say, you know, use A being 3, B being 5, C being negative 2, which I'm sure you've done before. Just apply it to this, and you'd be solving for, not for X, you'd be solving for cosecant, right? And then you'd have to follow the, the process. You just get two different numbers there, so not really any different. All right, so that's a beginning look at solving second-degree trig equations using factoring.